Welcome back. Crypto only laptop part three. System requirements, operating systems and example laptops. So these are the laptop brands from the last video. Fujitsu, Panasonic, Gigabyte, HP and Samsung. And for all of those, you will usually find laptops in different price ranges. The minimum I suggest for the system requirements is going to be four gigabytes for the RAM. So you can open six to seven Chrome tabs. You should make sure though that maybe that it's extendable so you can add more RAM later and that it's not soldered. For the CPU, a Ryzen 3 3000 or a Celeron N5095 or an Athlon Gold. Make sure that you don't get a Pentium Silver or Gold because usually those are bad value and they show up in those like lower spec laptops. For the disk, get an M2 or an SSD, any size, it doesn't matter. Most laptops will have them. I wouldn't select one of those old hard hardware drives. For the USB ports, check two or more. Most laptops will have two or more anyway though, and one USB-C because hardware wallets, sometimes they have a USB-C, sometimes they have a normal USB or USB mini. So just be aware of that. Graphics cards, non or integrated. Doesn't really matter usually for a crypto laptop. You don't do gaming on it anyway. And most brands start to have dedicated graphic cards in the super expensive lists that, that go like $1,800, $2,000 and so on. Usually you don't need them for a crypto lab and you won't find them in the cheaper models anyway. For the OS, Windows 10 or 11, display any. The cheaper the laptop, the smaller the, la the display can get. So you get like a 15 or 14 inch display. Uh, and sometimes you'll get a TN panel. It doesn't really matter for the use case. Wi-Fi 5 or 6. Most laptops will have Wi-Fi and I couldn't find any that don't have it. But if you want to have an AirGap laptop, you're going to disable it later. Anyway, I'm going to talk about that. For the mouse, uh, it's an optional purchase. You should get one though, because it's much, much easier than to deal with this trackpad. And you're going to click a lot uh, in the DeFi apps and so on. So quick note about the Ryzen CPUs. Uh, it's going to be about the 3000 series. There is this scheme where they go from 1000, 2000, 3000, 5000. The 4000 is missing here on the desktop version. But then on the mobile side, there is no Ryzen 1000 and it starts at 3000, 4000, 5000. So there is a discrepancy in the series. And then what's different is that the Ryzen 3000 on the mobile side is actually a 12 nanometer chips chipset. And then for the 3000 on the desktop, it's the seven mini nanometer one. Just be aware of that when you, when you pick it up. So now we go to the optimal specs. We start with the RAM, it's eight gigabytes, which allows you to open 30 Chrome tabs, which is much more convenient and comfortable, especially if you have a lot of like DeFi websites, guides, um, some YouTube videos and so on open, uh, maybe on a telegram as well, if you keep it online, so stuff like that. It, it, it's, it's much better to have eight gigabytes for the CPU, Intel core I three or Ryzen three, 4,000 or better. Uh, quick side note on the Intel side for theirs. It's just the higher, the number, the better the CPU is on the Intel. They don't have those discrepancies like Ryzen does. This size again, doesn't matter. M2 SSD, any size. The, the US will be your biggest install, maybe like antivirus or something, a few small apps, the hardware wallet software, but usually those are super small and you most likely won't use more than 40 or 60 gigabytes. And most laptops will come with an 128 gigabyte SSD anyway. For the USB ports on a higher model, you can get a little bit more, three or more, and then one USB-C. So you don't have to deal with uh, plugging and unplugging all your hardware wallets or USB sticks or whatever, and then you'll have an easier time with it. Graphics card, same, non or integrated. It's gonna be on your CPU. For the US, Windows 10 or 11 Pro. 
and then for the display you can try to pick out a little bit nicer display but most a little bit more expensive or middle range laptops will have a better display anyway around 15.6 inch and full hd so 1080p and an ips monitor wi-fi same five or six and mouse same optional now let's talk a little bit about the operating system the first thing to note is choose the operating system that is convenient and comfortable for you to use something that you already know how to use because Malware and keyloggers exist for all of us. So it, there is no sense in uh, choosing one or if you heard that like Mac OS, oh, there is less viruses or something, they, they're still there. You're still gonna get fished if you don't uh, pay attention. It's, it's kind of the same. Um, there are more drive-by uh, malware though for Windows in general, but the risk in general is the same. And learning a new OS can become a pitfall, especially if you're new, you're not very technical and you try to get into Linux and somebody told you, oh, this is the most secure and you can do everything, but you can also destroy everything by using the wrong command or you won't know how to find something. So usually Windows is the most common one. So then you should format and reinstall your operating system. That means you remove any pre-installation. If the laptop comes to you with Windows installed, you format it, remove everything, and then reinstall Windows again. This removes any bloatware, potential malware, any apps you don't use, any spyware, and so on. Then you lock down the install and you keep it secure and minimalistic, meaning you only install what you need for crypto and nothing else. Maybe um, like an antivirus or something, the apps for the hardware wallets and so on, and then you keep it at that. Mac OS in general is very expensive. It has some compatibility issues for apps. That's something to look out for. And they usually get updates a little bit later than everybody else. But it looks nice and it's very convenient for some people to use. So if you're already used to it, stay on macOS. Just be aware that there can be some issues. Linux, it's only for advanced users. And I only recommend it for advanced users. Like if you don't know how to use Linux, you shouldn't try to force it and try to get into that. It's like get comfortable using it maybe over time, but it also can have compatibility issues because it's just not what most people use. It's very niche. And then we got Windows 10 Pro has wide adoption. There's lots of documentation, support, help. Most people use it. It's very easy. Now let's talk a little bit more about Linux. It's hard to learn. There are some risk traps. There are even hardware compatibility issues because not all of the Linux OS versions run with all the hardware. So if you get maybe like a niche laptop, you might not be able to run Linux on it. Just be aware of that. Uh, Void Ubuntu and all its derivatives. They recently started to have really hostile user behavior. There is like silent updates via the snap packages, reduced security and whatnot. They've become a mess really, although they were really old and used to be very newbie friendly, but it's not like that anymore. There are two exceptions. Those are the Pop OS and Mint. They are kind of okay. They don't have that snap package, uh, but they are more for daily drive OS and they, they kind of look similar to, um, you, you can get some UIs that are similar to Mac OS if, you, if you're into that. Then Tails OS. This is brought up a few times, especially uh, for anonymous communication. It uses the Tor system in the background, so you can st really stay hidden. But most ABC agencies, they are looking into that and they are logging everything. I think it's unnecessary and you'll get compatibility issues with um, your hardware wallets and so on. It's really only, again, for experienced users. And then if you are connected to any of your centralized exchanges, those have KYC anyway, and then you're leaking your KYC even while you're connected to all those Tor networks through Tails. So it's, it's, it's not worth it in my opinion. But if you're into that kind of thing and you already know how to use Linux, go ahead. 
Tales of S might be the thing that you can get your geek on. Uh, Debian Stable. This one has a lot of support documentation. It's one of the older Linux distributions. It has um, it has been run since like 1993 or something, constantly updated. And it's also the base for other uh, Linux like the Ubuntu one. It's very easy, newbie friendly. Yeah, If you want to start out, try that one. And for Linux, you have the option to have a live ISO. That means it's a bootable USB stick where you can just have your whole OS on a USB drive. You plug it into your PC, boots up, you do your stuff. It only loads into the RAM. It doesn't write to the disk. You shut it down, you unplug it, and then everything is only on your USB stick. It's kind of convenient. Then I got a few tips for you. BitLocker encryption, it requires Windows 10 or 11 Pro, so it's not available on the base version, but it's very handy if you want to have additional encryption on your hard drive. So you can uh, encrypt your whole hard drive, any USB sticks for like your history, your data, um, anything that's private and you want to keep hidden, even if your laptop gets stolen, you can encrypt that with the BitLocker encryption then I would suggest to get an external USB hub, but you have to watch out. They are convenient, but there is a minor increased attack vector in case somebody is uh, has a like a chain supply attacked uh, external USB hub, but usually they are so cheap and so um, easy to produce. There's not a lot of things that are going wrong with them. Uh, and you might have compatibility issues through external USB hubs, especially if you connect some hardware wallets to it. So um, you might want to attach your mouse to it or some other stuff, but then plug in the hard hardware wallet to the native USB of the laptop anyway. Avoid Chromebooks. Those are very specified software and they have lots of compatibility issues. You cannot install normal software in it. Uh, you'll have headaches and some software suites for the hardware walls. They can't even run on those uh, Chromebooks. Be careful when you buy like real, buy like really cheap laptops. Some of them are Chromebooks. You have to look out for that. The RAM, as I noted earlier, make sure that it's extendable and not soldered. And for most laptops, you will find I I fix it guides where you can check out how to exchange the RAM and how to do it. And it looks like this here. This is the iFixit website. And then look, there's like 64 categories of all the different laptop brands. Here's for example, for the, for all the HP series. And then if you want to air gap your laptop, you disconnect the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth completely. And this one you can also check out for for most laptops, you will find guides on how to do it. And uh, the series are usually the same. So even if it's not like the exact one, here's an example for the HP Pavilion 15. Yeah, here's a guide, you open it, you pry it open, and then you see the internals, you unscrew some of the bolts, some of the screws. And this is the unit that's connected to an antenna. And you just remove the whole thing, unscrew it and pop it out and bams, it's not connected anymore. Your air gapped laptop is ready. Next note on the SSD, never give it away if you use it for anything crypto related. Make sure that uh, if it's not working anymore, that you destroy it completely. Take a hammer to it, throw it into molten lava, whatever you have to do. Right? <clears throat> then some useful software recommendations get Bitdefender the free antivirus version it's very good uh, antivirus not sponsored I just use it for myself at home Winra might be very useful to have and notepad plus plus for looking at code uh, contract addresses and so on have some it's much better than the normal text uh, file editor in Windows or any other OS so let's look at some examples in the Google Sheet and the Google Sheet is in the 
description down below. Uh, this whole sheet can be easily copied, by the way. You just go to File and then Make a Copy. It will allow to copy it to your own Google Drive. And then you can do all kinds of things, manipulate the data, change it. And here, for example, is the overall rating of all the laptops. See my previous video for that. Uh, from great, good, acceptable, okay, to bad and terrible. And for example, let's say you only want the best of the best. You only want the ones and twos. You can clear them and sort only one and two. And now the list gets a little bit slow, uh, smaller. So in the example laptops, I noted the price, the CPU, CPU name, cores, uh, the frequency, then the CPU score from CPU benchmarks, which is cpubenchmark.net. This is just a website that allows you to upload your benchmark. And then you can see for the, let's say, highest models, like how many points did the CPU get? You can check it out. And I noted them for the example laptops here, the SSD size, RAM, and then does this specific packet what is sold here, does it come with an OS or no? Some have 11, some have 10 Pro and so on. And also a quick note about like soldered RAM, is it a gaming laptop and so on. So let me reset the filter, select all, and then just have a look at the list. As you can see, in the two to three thousand range, you're you're getting a widespread wide range of CPU score, and then this one is probably the best bang for the buck, three hundred euros, Ryzen three. It's so it's the twelve nanometer one, but it's a fast fast boy. Oh no, wait, sorry, uh, three seven thousand. So that's or actually the the better one. Uh, it's a 7000 series, uh, 9000 points, but it doesn't come with an OS. It has 8 gigabytes, 256 SSD gigabyte, way more than you need, but it has solar RAM, so you never want to upgrade it anyway, though. 8 gigabytes should be fine, as an example. And then you can have a look. These, these are all links. You can open the website. It's a German one, but you can just translate it on Google and then see what it's all about yeah and this is the list it has uh, the framework in here Panasonic Tafbook these are very rugged design the expensive gigabyte gaming laptops as you can see they're super expensive my personal suggestion is stay within this like 300 400 euro range and you'll get a pretty good laptop stick with the good brands Fujitsu HP, and you're good to go. Okay. Thanks for watching. Here's a cute cat. If you made it to the end, uh, all the links are in the in the description. Check out the uh, the Google Sheet. And one actually, oof, I forgot one last thing. I would suggest to have a look at this video here. And it's by Linus Tech Tips. It's how to buy a laptop. It's a guide to, it's a general guide on how to make a purchase and what to look out for in a laptop. Well, with this, thanks again. And behold, my stuff. On my Etsy shop, I just added a new offer, which is for a full package of Crypto Seed backups. So you'll have free seed backups, the stamps, the jig that helps you do the stamping, some extra washers, and it's just a complete package. Check me out on my Twitter, Telegram, Instagram. I'm BBK Baum everywhere. This is my Etsy shop. Maybe have a look at it. And this is my newest offer. Yeah. With that, bye. Thank you for watching. <laughs>